Many people only have limited time to practice guitar, but we want to get the most out of our practice session without guitar practice becoming yet another daily task. I sometimes struggle with this. How to balance the fun exercises, the fun stuff, with the necessary, sometimes frustrating exercises? And how to prevent the fun stuff from also becoming frustrating? That's what this video is about. Let's illustrate the mistakes I made in my guitar practice routine and ideas to solve it with one of the exercises in level five of next level playing. The exercise I'm talking about is a chord progression played using arpeggios and triplets at around 140 beats per minute. Well, for me, that is pretty fast. Let's first listen to an example of what this exercise should sound like. So yeah, what went wrong? Let's first discuss how I practiced. So when I initially approached the exercise, I used practice sessions for this one exercise of around half an hour. I would set the metronome at a certain speed and every few minutes I would increase the BPM by a few BPM. And within a week I could play it at 120 beats per minute, which actually isn't so far off from the 140 beats per minute that I kind of put as a target. But how could it still take me months to reach this 140 beats per minute? Yeah, practice more maybe. And that's what I did. But I think the way that you practice is also very important. For example, how many minutes do you want to dedicate to one exercise within a practice session? And how many weeks do you want to keep this one exercise in your practice routine? And another important uh, idea, at what speed do you want to start practicing the exercise every practice session? So all of these aspects of how to approach an exercise or how to approach practicing guitar came together for me after a while. So how to deal with frustrating difficulties? So my first idea here is to actually reflect on your practice sessions so that you're able to realize that and when you are stuck. I record my playing pretty often and certainly not every video that I record ends up on this channel, but it helps me to see uh, whether I'm making progress or not. But I also keep a practice journal where I mainly write down at what speed I am practicing a certain exercise and if there are parts of the exercise that I'm struggling with, then I would write like a short note like this is the part of the exercise I'm struggling with so that I can uh, specifically focus on it the next time. What also helped me was adjusting the speed at which I would start practicing the exercise every practice session. You want to adjust your starting speed in line with your current abilities. Not too easy and not too hard. Personally, I had the tendency to start practicing the exercise every day at about the same speed, similar BPM increases and ending with a similar speed. That was, of course, before I started to be a bit more serious about the practice journal. But if I start practicing an exercise at 90 beats per minute on day one, and it's going very well, why wouldn't I increase the starting speed to 92 or 95 beats per minute the next time I'm practicing? When I felt ready to finally leave this uh, uh, exercise behind me, I actually started practicing it at 130 beats per minute, which was much faster than the speed that I would end practicing it weeks before that. My third idea is to also consider the role of the exercise in your practice routine. As I mentioned earlier, this exercise kind of became like a big thing for me. I just felt like I really had to master it before moving on in the course. But looking back at it, I put so much effort and emphasis on just the technical exercise. At a certain frustrating moment, I kind of stopped treating it as like a main objective, but just as one of the exercises in the practice routine. And instead of practicing it for half an hour, I was now practicing it for 15 minutes. And I feel that already by reducing uh, the emphasis or importance of this exercise, it already got a bit less frustrating. As a fourth idea, you could consider to split uh, the practice time into separate practice sessions. When I say that I worked on this arpeggio exercise for 15 minutes, it is not entirely true, because what I actually did was I was practicing it for 15 minutes in two separate practice sessions spread throughout the day. And lastly, if an exercise really starts to get frustrating and starts to annoy you, maybe 
it's just better not to play it for a bit. Just let it go for a week or longer if it's really bad. And then bring it back to your practice routine if you're feeling ready for it. So yeah, how to proceed in the next level of next level playing. First of all, I plan to watch all videos of all exercises within the level before starting or even planning a practice routine. Thinking which exercises are probably going to be difficult for me, I'll just bring them in my practice routine right away. I also want to keep it more interesting by alternating exercises. What I mean by that is to remove exercises from your practice routine once you feel like you've completely mastered them or they start to annoy you, but also to uh, bring back certain exercises that maybe you mastered before but didn't play for a while. And finally, I want to start the practice routine with something easy and fun, just to feel a bit more relaxed before jumping into something difficult and maybe frustrating. Because after all, playing guitar is about fun. And it shouldn't be a grind. Thanks for watching.